So a very warm welcome to each and everyone present today. I hope all of you are in good health. Now these are the concepts that you actually deal in OOP programming. That is object oriented programming. So we'll just see how those OOP concepts are actually integrated are used in Java. Moving on. I come to create new object type with class keyword. Whenever you have to declare a class, you'll be using a class keyword. You would have seen many times right here in animal. Whenever you want to define a class, class keyword is used. In aquatic as well, you can see the same thing. Reptile, you have got the same thing and even in the main. So class keyword has to be present whenever you have to define a class. Now, a class definition can contain variables in it, it can contain initialization code in it, it can contain methods in it. Okay, so these are the three things that your classes can contain. Variables, you know that. Like x is a variable, like there was a type variable in the class animal. Okay, so these are all variables that can be defined within the class. Then you can have initialization code. You wrote that type equals to not human. Okay, you are actually initializing that variable, so that is a kind of initialization code. Similarly, you can have methods. We'll be dealing with methods in a while. So you can also have methods within your class. Okay. Now, an example class. Package com.adureka.entity. So this is a package name in which you have got a class car. A car class has got three variables in it, string name, string color and float weight. So you can have many variables. You can also have methods within your class like public void move. Now this method is not returning anything because it is void. The return type has been set to void as well as it is not taking any parameters. Neither it has got a definition in it. Okay. So we'll understand what is a method. So this is just a example of a particular class that you generally have in Java. Moving on, what are objects? What is the function of an object? First of all, object is the runtime representation of a class. Okay, that means whenever you have to use a particular class, you'll be using an object, you'll be creating an object of that particular class. Using that object, you can use the things that are present in that class. Okay, like if you see the example right here, we have used object when I come to main class. I wanted to use the content that is present in the aquatic class. So what I did, I created the object of this aquatic class. First of all, I wrote the name of the class that is aquatic. Then I mentioned ob that is object name equals to new operator actually allocates memory for your object. And then I again write the aquatic with the parenthesis and I put a semicolon. So this is the syntax how you actually define an object of a class. Using this object, I'm using this variable that is type as well as the variable that is lives. Okay, so I'm using the content of the class using the object of that class. Hence it is told that object is the runtime representation of a class. Okay, or you would have heard that an instance of a class is called an object. Now, object holds state with variables. Can any one of you tell me the meaning of this line over here that is objects hold state with variables? Please write down on the chat window. These are all consider it as a poll question, but instead of clicking the radio buttons, you have to write on the chat window. So I'm sure Sai will answer this question. He loves questions. So all of you write it. What do you think is the meaning of the statement that is object hold the state with variables? If you do not know, you can write no on the chat. Sai says lol, I don't know the answer. <laughs> okay, what about the rest of you? Mohsin says no. Lokesh says don't know sir. Objects contains the variables, Umar says, okay. As Ashraf says, object hold class variables, okay. Arun says, life cycle, okay. Any other answer? None of you is perfect right now. No value of variable without object. Okay, Nikhil says, variable with its value. Okay, that's correct. Now he's quite close. Nikhil says that, variable with its value. Every object has got its own instance variable, okay. 
Yes, Mayang, exactly the correct word, instance variable. Every object has got its own instance variable, and that variable will have their own different values. Okay? I'll show you a demonstration as well on this. Let's see other answers. Uh, Amir says, means it has value of variables or its states. Umar says, variables are associated with objects. Okay? Mayang says, instance variable. Let's check out. I'm going to Eclipse now. Uh, let's make a diff new project. I'll close this. File. I'll go to New. Java Project. Testing. Is there a project with testing name? No. So I write Testing. And this. In the source folder, I'll add a class that is test1. And finish. First of all, I'll add one more class, new. Test2. I'll include the main method in it and I'll click on finish. Machine says that I'll be back in two minutes. Okay. Ashraf says it's all default values. Okay. Now, in this, I'll declare one variable integer state. Okay. S T A T E. I put a semicolon. I come to test2 file. In the test2 file, what I did, I want to use that variable. I'm creating an object of that variable. Test1 equals sorry the object name ob1 equals to new and test1 semicolon I create one more object that is test1 ob2 equals to new test1 and I put a semicolon. So we have got two objects. Using the two objects, both the objects will have their own distinct instance variable. What is the instance variable? This variable right here will be the instance variable of the objects of test1 class. Okay, so I'll be using the instance variable by using the object that is ob1.state equals to 10. I put a semicolon ob Two dot state. I'm using the instance variable of second one, and I will assign a value 18, and I save it. So I'm putting different values in both of these things. Now it does not mean that the va value of this state variable will change to 18 now. Okay, I'll just print out the statement system dot out dot print ln, and in that first I'll print this one. and then I'll print this one okay first I'll copy this and in that I'll change it to ob2 okay I run this code control F11 I receive 10 and 18 on the console window then that means that these two objects are actually holding the state of their variables Prana says different copy for both object exactly correct okay so they'll be holding the state of their variables whatever value is present in that uh, variable will be stored okay it will be safe it won't change so all of you are clear with this line that was present that is object hold state with variables everyone write down on the chat window if you are clear Ashra says yes sir Mavis says yes. Sai, Pranav, Amir, Mayank, Arun. Arun says state is of object type. No, state is not of object type. State is of, uh, I think it is of integer type. Yes, it is of integer type. It is not of object type. Okay? Okay then. I come to the third statement that is objects do some work with methods that is you can use a method using the object we'll be discussing as soon as we discuss the objects sorry 
as soon as we discuss the methods part then we'll be I'll be showing you how to use method using the objects they are used in a similar fashion like you're using the object okay now objects can be created during runtime as follows right here as I told you first write the name of the class then you mention the object name it could be any name equals to new and car with the parenthesis and you put the semicolon this way you'll be creating the name of the object you'll be creating a new object let's move on and I come to methods a method takes some parameters perform some computations and then optionally returns a value so whenever you want to create a functionality okay Mayank sends me a sad smiley now whenever you have to make a functionality like for addition you want to make a function for addition you want to make a function for subtraction or any other thing if you want to provide a particular functionality you can make a method this way you'll be modularizing your application okay you'll be making a different method for that and by using by making a method you can call that particular method at many places this way you'll be reducing the redundant code okay you'll be reusing the code now we'll see what are the things that are present in a method methods have got five components one is modifiers we'll be discussing about modifiers in the later part of the class modifiers are like public private protected and there is a default one whenever you miss writing any the any one of them then in those cases it will be taking the default one now we come to return type a method can return a value it could be an integer value it could be a string value it could be a character it could be float or it could return nothing if you are not returning anything you'll be mentioning void in place of the return type that means this method will not return anything Amir says is there any difference between methods and functions now you would have also heard of procedure okay method is a general name there are two kinds it is actually methods is actually divided into procedure and functions procedure is the name given for a method which is not returning anything which has a void return type in that case the method is called procedure if a method is returning a value whether integer or any value in those cases that method is termed as functions okay but they'll always remain a method it is just a definition it is the theory part that is a method returns anything it is a function if it does not return anything it is a procedure are you clear Amir please write down on the chart window okay good now I was on return type so you, I guess you are understood with you have understood return type that is it can return a value or it cannot if it is not returning any value in those cases you'll be mentioning void we come to method name the third one method name is actually the identifier of a method using the name of the method we can use that particular method okay so it is the identifier of the method the method name third thing is the list of arguments or you can call the parameter list now it contains different arguments that is if a method needs certain values on which it has to do the computation in those cases you actually take values right here example if you're adding two numbers the method is adding two numbers then it will require two numbers with as the parameter so you'll pass integer a comma integer b as the parameter and those values will be used in body of the method now we come to the part that is body in the body you'll, you'll be providing the definition of the operation okay Th that has to be performed that means you can say that functionality of this particular method will be present in the body of the method that will be enclosed between the curly braces okay we come to modifiers now I told you it is a part of method or any class or anywhere it is used all over the application now first modifier is a public modifier any method in a class can access the field okay that means if anything any entity has been mentioned as public that means that particular entity can be used all over the application whether it is a variable a method or a class okay so it could be used all over an application it is a government thing like if it is a government property a government park anyone can go there similarly if you have got a public variable that variable can be used by 
any class, anything, okay? It would be used all over the application. We come to protected. Any method in the same package or any derived class can access the field. When an entity has been mentioned as protected, that means that entity can be used within the, by the classes that are present in the same package or can be used by a derived class. Okay, this is the condition. It could be used either by the classes that are present in the same package or it could be used by the derived classes. Finally, we come to the third access modifier that is the private. If some entity has been mentioned as private, that means only methods within the class can access the field. I have also shown you an example for private and protected. As well as public, we have been using all over the application. So whenever something has been mentioned as private, that could only be used in that particular class itself. Finally, when you do not mention public, protected or private, any of the modifiers, then in those cases what happens, it takes the default. Default is that only methods in the same package can access the field. Okay, that means the classes that are present in the same package can only, <coughs> sorry, access that particular entity in which you haven't mentioned the access modifier. So first of all, what do you mean by abstract? What do you think abstract is? Yogesh says derived from one class. Arun says hiding. Exactly correct. Hiding. That means you do not provide an abstract thing. Do not provide the detail. Okay. You do not get to know what is inside that. You just have an overview of that and that is called abstraction. That is data hiding. For example, right here. Abstract class shape. You have got a class shape that is an abstract class. Now you do not know in that shape whether that shape is a circle, whether it is a rectangle or it is a triangle. You do not have that detail, right? So you have abstract class shape which gives an overview that it is some kind of shape. Now when you further classify it, it could be a rectangle, it could be a circle, it could be a triangle. So in Java what you do, you define abstract class and you put some details into that. Just the names, okay? Finally you can extend this shape. Like rectangle is a shape, so what you did, class rectangle extends shape, class circle extends shape, and class triangle extends shape. Okay, like this you can have many other kinds of shape like octagonal, hexagonal, anything. They all will come under this category that is shape, and you can implement this, you can extend this abstract class into that particular class. Moving on, what is an abstract class? A abstract class that is declared abstract is called an abstract class, okay? A class which is preceded by an abstract keyword. Whenever you define abstract class, you write abstract, then the name of the class. Hence, that class is termed as abstract class. Example is abstract class demo. So this class demo is actually an abstract class because it has been declared as abstract right here using the abstract keyword. It may or may not use abstract methods. Now, what do you mean by abstract methods? First of all, I hope you are clear with what are methods because we did it in the last class. Now, last to last class, I guess. Now, tell me, what is abstract methods? I've told you what is an abstract class. Can any one of you tell me what are abstract methods? Irfan says only header, no body. Okay, that's correct. Mayank says methods which do not have any body. Exactly correct, both of you, Irfan and Mayank. That's correct. Moving on. Now, as you said, what is an abstract class? A method that is declared abstract, first of all. A method that is declared without an implementation. You do not have the body. You do not have the definition of that particular method present. Okay, so that... Uh, that method will be termed as an abstract method which does not have a implementation and you actually mention it as abstract. Example is abstract void add int x and int y. So you have got a method that is add which is taking two parameters integer x and integer y. So I says hi Vineet I'm leaving for job now so can't attend the class so will you will go through the video later thanks we'll miss the class. Okay, that's fine, Zai. You can move forward. 
but i guess you'll be present in the next class right he says yes will surely that's good okay now i was on abstract methods you mentioned the abstract keyword you write void add int x and int y so this is an abstract method that you have declared it would be present in an abstract class an example right here public abstract class shape okay i've implemented the same example that we saw in the starting you have got a class shape which is an abstract class in that you have defined abstract void area so there is a method that is an abstract method since it is mentioned as abstract and you do not have the implementation of the method right here so after that you close the abstract class now you had a class that is rectangle and the other class was circle in rectangle you wanted to use this class that is abstract you used extend shape as soon as you extended this class you can use this method that is area now once you extend this class you have got this method area within that you can provide the implementation like when you have to find the area of the rectangle you are using length into width okay now when you implement the same shape when you extend the same abstract shape class then in that in the area method what you are defining 3.14 into radius into radius in case of circle the formula of area is different so what is the benefit of this abstract method it is that as soon as you extend this abstract class you can implement this method which would be common for both rectangle and circle but you are providing different definitions within them okay so this way you have got the structure there is no detail pre present you have the overview you have the structure and what you can do whatever detail you need whatever detail you require in your application you can implement that detail using that abstract method and the class we come to interface what is an interface an interface are declared using the interface keyword whenever you see a interface keyword you should understand that this is an in interface interface is kind of a middleware you can say that not like that but what you can do you can consider it as a medium through which you can use certain methods which do not have a you can use certain methods which do not have an implementation right there is an interface now this interface has got three abstract methods one two and three there is a class this class wants to use this interface so what it does it implements this interface the keyword that is used to use an interface is implements instead of writing extends you'll be using implements and using that you'll get all the three abstract methods you can use all the three abstract methods within your class you can define them in the class right now what is the advantage of an interface can anyone tell me do you have any idea what is the advantage of an interface any one of you okay now how many of you know that multiple inheritance Nickel says we can create a template for every object. Mang says a kind of protocol to be followed by the class. Hardik says no idea. Vasil says it is you used as multiple in inheritance. Vasil, that's a good answer. Pratik says supports multiple inheritance exactly. Now in Java, Java does not support multiple inheritance, but you can attain it by using an interface. You can only extend a class, but you can implement multiple classes. As Mayang gave me a poem last in the last class, that is, uh, sky is blue, something like that. You can you can extend one, but implement two. That means it could be two, three, anything. You can implement as many interfaces as you want. So this is one of the importance of interface in Java, so that you can attain multiple int inheritance okay my sends me a smiley so I hope you are quite clear with this diagram right here the motive was you should understand the keyword that is used as well as you should understand all the classes will be used in the class all the methods and interface will be used in the class